From anatomy to anesthesiology, from pathology to pharmacology, from microbiology to medicine, a one-man resource to the world of health sciences. Welcome to Dr. Paul's Medical Lectures. A practicing physician, Dr. Paul offers you essential insights on diseases afflicting millions of people around the world. For today's lecture, here is Dr. Paul. Good afternoon, folks. This is Dr. Paul. Thank you very much for tuning to our channel today. This evening, I want to talk a few minutes about the watts. Watts are basically cutaneous neoplasms caused by papilloma viruses. There are like 100 different human papilloma viruses. For the sake of brevity, I will say HPV. A typical wart has is a verruca vulgaris. It's a sessile dome shaped and it has like a few centimeters in diameter. The surface is hyperkeratotic and uh, it has a small filamentous projections. For easy remembrance, Divide them, plantar warts, filiform warts, flat warts, and genital warts. Four different types of warts. Let's see the first one, plantar warts. Plantar warts are, they are endophilic. They have a thick keratin. And they generally demonstrate a central core of keratinized debris and a punctuate bleeding points. Secondly, filiform warts. They look like filiform, usually face, neck, and skin folds, and uh, they have a narrow base. Then comes, uh, thirdly, the flat warts. They are slightly elevated, and mostly they happen on the face. And people who shave their beards, they will have those warts sometimes, and they actually spread by shaving. So that's about the flat warts. Then comes genital warts. Genital warts begin as a small papillomas that may grow to form large fungating lesions. In women they may involve uh, either the labia, the perineum or perianal skin. And uh, let me see, show you a picture. Here you can see uh, on the, there are warts right under the vagina in the perianal skin. So this is how genital warts happen. And um, even in men, in the coronal sulcus of the penis or the scrotum or perianal skin, the, they are most commonly affected areas in men. So HPV is common and it spreads. Sometimes people with uh, uh, genital warts in men, they transmit that virus to women. And HPV 16 and 18, they are the most common types of HPV associated with genital warts. HPV, remember that HPV types 16 and 18, they are associated with uh, intraepithelial neoplasia and squamous cell carcinoma of the cervix and anus, vulva and penis. So that's an important point. And also the risk is higher in patients with immunosuppressed conditions of like a solid organ transplantation and patients with uh, HIV. So patients with long-term immunosuppression should be monitored for the development of squamous cell carcinoma and other cutaneous malignancies. And what's are, so they are skin-colored papules with rough, we say verrucas, basically verrucas means rough. They have a verrucous surfaces, a rough surface. They are called by human papilloma, they are caused by human papilloma virus, a DNA virus. We have 100 different types of HPV virus, they proliferate and uh, they develop a warty growth. Now a few words about treatment. Treatment of warts other than anogenital warts should be tempered uh, by the observation that the majority of warts in normal individuals, they resolve within one to two years. So that's a very, very important point. Majority of warts in normal individuals, they resolve spontaneously within one to two years because many patients freak out. Wow, I got these warts. Oh, I'm depressed. Maybe that's not the end of the world because majority of warts resolve spontaneously within one to two years. There are other modalities available that works, but there is no single therapy that is universally effective. So first thing is education. Tell the patient this resolves spontaneously in one to two years. Tell the patient there is not one single universally 
effective therapy. And uh, the treatment you choose depends on different things, patient's age, immunological condition, the, and, uh, the lesion, the location, but most often cryotherapy with liquid nitrogen is the most useful treatment. Cryotherapy with liquid nitrogen. And equally effective for non-genital wards but requiring much more uh, compliance is the use of keratolytic agents like uh, salicylic acid and uh, uh, solutions. And for a genital warts, you can do in-office application of podophyllin solution. So podophyllin is also a very, very useful treatment. And you can also give a prescription for dilute podophyllin available for home use. There is a topical imiquimod and it's an inducer of uh, local cytokine release. So topical part of an imiquimod and a trichloroacetic acid. In my clinic I have trichloroacetic acid and cryotherapy. So I use different based on patient's preference. But I always give the uh, hydrogen, um, sorry, liquid nitrogen cryosurgery therapy and a trichloroacetic therapy. And many times you need to use them a few times. They are not going to get better with one application. You need to bring them back every two weeks uh, until they are gone. So you see the treatment, there is not a one universal effective treatment. We have to try different, different things. But as I said, there are four different types. The first one, platter warts, filiform warts, flat warts, genital warts. They are basically caused by HPV, human papillomavirus. So those are the most important points I wanted to share with you this uh, morning. Please post your important points um, so other people can learn from your comments. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Thanks for listening. For more medical videos, please visit us at www.drpaul.org and take time to browse through hundreds of health videos we regularly post on our site. If you are preparing for USMLE, PLAB, and other medical exams, make sure you visit our website to browse through our videos explaining the essential points you need to know before taking these examinations. For more information, visit us at www.drpaul.org. Thank you, and may God richly bless you.